See, well, I don't know that I've done this in a long time. I, I preached a sermon this morning, and I, I obviously uh, overestimated my abilities to finish a sermon on time. So uh, I am doing the last part of it tonight. But the Lord really spoke to my heart today in the sermon. I, I like it when I'm preaching, and He's talking to me as I'm preaching. That's always, but it was really a, a neat time this morning. I want to go back, and it may not be on the screen, doesn't matter if it is, but go back to Acts 27. Uh, the heart of this whole uh, incident here is uh, starting at verse 21. Acts 27, 21. When they had gone a long time without food. Now, look, are those guys good? Can I make a statement? I did not tell them I was going to do this. They're good. Okay. When they had gone a long time without food, then Paul stood up. To me, this is the moment that the miracle began. It, it, he tells about what God had said to him. He stood up in their midst and said, Men, you ought to have followed my advice and not to have set sail from Crete and incurred this damage and loss. Yet now, God's a right now God, is He not? Yet now, there's the pivot, there's the spiritual turn. I urge you to keep up your courage, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. Now, you know what? <clears throat> if I'm one of those 200 and 70 some odd people on this ship, I'm listening to this guy. He's the only positive guy on the ship. I mean, this guy has heard from God. I, I like to, listen, you don't have to have a PhD to hear from God. In fact, sometimes, no offense, a PhD can get in the way, all right? So I, I'm not saying if you have a PhD, you can't hear from God. I am saying this, sometimes if you get so laboriously studious that, that you think that God can only could speak to it if you have parsed every verb just right and everything else. You know, sometimes God just hauls off and speaks to us. Amen? And He does it in various ways. Here, He spoke through an angel. He said, I, I urge you, keep up your courage, for there will be no loss of life among you, only of the ship. For this very night, an angel of God to whom I belong. Is that not precious? I belong to this God. He sent an angel to me, an angel of God, to whom, the God of whom, to whom I belong, and whom I serve stood before me. Can you just imagine what that was like? Paul praying and an angel coming. I just want to make a statement. I would have made a hole in that boat. Amen? It, it was scared me probably so much. Paul was used to God speaking to him like this. And he said, he stood before him and he said, and this is what they always say, don't be afraid. You know, they must be so awesome that the minute you see them, they have to calm you down. Because they always start, I don't care if it's Gabriel speaking to Mary, the mother of Jesus, they always start off, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Paul, you must stand before Caesar. Behold, God has granted you all those who are sailing with you. And then verse 25, therefore, keep up your courage, men, for I believe God, that it will turn out exactly as I have been told. And then let's go over to verse 34. Can we just turn over to verse 34 very quickly? Therefore, I encourage you to take some food. He's encouraging them again. For this is for your preservation. Not a hair from the head of any one of you will perish. How could he say that God had given him a promise? I'm going to rescue you out of this storm and everybody with you. Isn't it great to know believers that walk with God? Isn't it great to be a believer who walks with God? And God blesses the people around you. God will bless other people around you if you'll have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Having said this, Paul took some bread. He gave thanks to God in the presence of all. He broke it. He began to eat. 
And all of them were encouraged. All of them took courage. All of them had courage come back in them. And they themselves also took food. All of us in the ship were 276 persons, literally. It's the word psuche. It's a hard word to say, but it is the word souls. 276 souls on board there. And then we'll just go all the way down now to verse 44. The last sentence says, and so it happened that they all were brought safely to land just as Paul and God had promised. So, let me give you the extra advice if you're going through a storm. I'll be frank with you, I don't know if I've preached on a sermon out of Acts that I had more people after the sermon say, thank you preacher, that was for me. Thank you preacher, God spoke to my heart. Thank you preacher, God really used that to bless my life. And so, I know that the Lord wanted us to stay on this a little bit, so we'll just do it right now. Let me just give you a little bit of advice if you're going through a storm, if you're in the storm. We talked this morning about you're either heading into one pretty soon or you're in one or you're coming out of one. That's just the way life is. But uh, let me just give you, first of all, one thing to do when you're in a storm, going through a storm, whatever, remember God's past blessings. Remember God's past blessings. You know, the psalmist said, bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless the Lord of my soul. Now listen, forget none of his benefits. Let's say that together. Forget none of his benefits. And he says, who pardons all of my iniquities, who heals all of my diseases, redeems my life from the pit, crowns me with loving kindness and compassion, satisfies my years with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagle. God is a God that wants us to remember. You know, when you're going through a tough time, remember how good God has been to you in the past. When I was a kid growing up, we sang hymns all the time, and this was one of my favorites. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, amen. When you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many what? Blessings. Name them, and it will surprise you. I think y'all went to the same church I did. All right. I didn't see you because you were sitting up in the balcony, I guess. But uh, doesn't that bless you? When you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings. Name them one by one. You know how I start, you know how I start a lot of mornings? I just thank God for ten things. Just random things. I got in my car this morning. I said, Lord, thank you that I have a car. Lord, thank you that I am about to have breakfast. Thank you, Lord, that I have a body that is able to get in a car. Thank you that I had a house to sleep in last night. Thank you that I have a roof over my head. Thank you that I have clothes on my back. Thank you that I'm going to a good church today, Lord, that believes the Bible. Thank you that I get to preach the Word of God. Thank you that I get to be my, with my brothers and sisters today. And Lord, thank you that I have a wonderful wife that loves you. Thank you for our children. Thank you that my son is preaching today, that my son-in-law is preaching today, that my other son-in-law is leading worship today, and that my other son-in-law loves Jesus. Thank you, dear God, for my children. Thank you for my grandchildren. Thank you, God, that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I tell you what, Brother Joe, you start doing like that, you get happy in Jesus. Amen? Just take time to thank God for 10 things or 15. You know what? You'll never stop at 10. You'll just keep going right on. Just thanking God for so many blessings. And that's what you need to do when you're in a storm. Don't look at the storm. Look to the one that can conquer the storm. And in the midst of it all, like Job say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Oh, just think of God's goodness to you in the past. And then, not only remember God's past blessings, but replace worry with prayer. 
Jesus said worry does no good. Don't be anxious. Why are you anxious? He says in the Sermon on the Mount. I was so blessed today. I went to deacon's meeting and they read the whole Sermon on the Mount. Our deacon officers got up and read Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And one of the things that they read was Jesus' words there where he says, why are you anxious about what you're going to eat or what you're going to drink? Look at the birds of the air. Next time you go to Sonic, and I know you go, it's the only happy hour that I enjoy. Amen? Now, don't, don't you start tweeting that Brother Steve goes to happy hour somewhere. You better put Sonic on there, all right? And I get a Diet Coke is what I get with lime, all right? If you want to get me one of those anytime, I'll drink it, all right? But just watch the little birds that are all around. Little sparrows everywhere. And what are they doing? They're having, they're having a really good meal, all right? They're having what you drop out there. But God takes care of this. He said, look at the birds there. They don't, they don't sow, neither do they reap, nor do they gather into barns. They don't have savings accounts. They don't have annuities. They don't have retirement. And yet, you ready for this? Your heavenly Father feeds them are you not worth much more to him than they are? If God will feed the birds, do you think God will take care of his children? Yes or no? So you need to start praying. Don't worry. Birds don't worry. Birds don't have barns. Birds don't sow seed and reap. They don't, you've never seen a bird on a John Deere tractor. You've never seen it. You never will. And God takes care of the birds. If God takes care of the birds, God will take care of you. Philippians 4, 6, and 7, you can't beat it. And I love it in the New Living Translation. Let's read it together, please. Don't worry about anything. Come on now. Y'all not doing real good on this. Hurry up. Let's go. Get going. Here we go again. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. There it is. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all that He's done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds it, and you, as you live in Christ Jesus. He'll guard your heart. What is that? Your emotions. He'll guard your mind. What's that? Your thoughts. If God can take care of your thoughts and your emotions, you'll be all right. So, go through a storm. Replace worry with prayer. Remember God's past blessings. Replace worry with prayer. Number three, rely on God's promises. Oh my, oh my. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about praying the promises of God back to the one who made the promise. As you go through reading the Bible, and I hope that all of you have some sort of reading plan. I read the Bible through every year at least, and then there's a couple, three times I'll add to that reading the New Testament through in a month. And I, I just like to, I like to take a Bible bath. I mean, I just like to get in there and read the Word, not studying for a sermon, not looking for a sermon, just looking for a Word from God. I, I did that early this morning. I said, God, I, I need a Word from You. God woke me up early, and I needed a Word that didn't have anything to do with my sermon today. I just wanted a Word from God. And so I go in there, and I'm expecting God to speak to me, not for just information, not just for inspiration, but I want some revelation. I want God talking to me. I, I, I believe He talks through the Bible. And so I read the Word. I read over in the Gospel of Mark. I read in the book of Numbers. I read in Psalms. I read in Proverbs. God spoke to my heart. And I wrote down one of those. I've got it right here. I wrote it down <laughs> on a card. If I don't write it down, I don't remember it. What about you? Oh, I know y'all remember everything, but anyway, I don't. I wrote it down. I, I, I had this morning, it's very interesting, we're praying for this guy tonight. 
I was asking God, how many of you ever asked God questions? Anybody ever asked God I was asking, I said, God, why do you let some of your people be tortured and die? Why, why do you do that? I'm not saying that this guy's going to be tortured or die, but why do you let your people all over the world, why are Muslims crucifying Christians? Why do you allow that? Why did you allow the early Christians to be burned at the stake? Why do you allow that? And today I read in Mark 13, 13, Jesus said, just before I come, just before I come back, it's going to get really bad. And he said in Mark 13, 13, I wrote it down, you will be hated by all because of my name. Listen to me. Nowadays, if you pray in public in the name of Jesus, people get mad at you in America. They hate the name of Jesus. He said, you'll be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures, you ready for this, to the end will be saved. Is that a good promise? I'm going to endure to the end. Why? I want to be saved. I, I, I want to walk with God. So I wrote that down. Now, how are you going to pray that? It's real simple. Lord, I know that I'm going to be hated by all because of your name, but I pray that you will help me endure to the end. Lord, I want to be known to everybody that I'm saved, God. Now, I just pray that back to God. I'm going to stand on the promises. No matter how bad it gets, you know what? Bottom line, it really doesn't matter what happens to you on this earth because you're going to live forever, not on this earth, but in heaven. So what does it matter what they do to this old body? God's going to raise it up. Anyway, He's going to give you a brand new body. I know you, you don't like to think about the pain. I get it and all that. But whatever you experience, whatever, even if you're, you're, you're killed for your faith, bottom line is this, what does it matter compared to eternity? What does it matter where you live, what you drive, what you wear? None of that matters. What matters is you're living for God, and the bottom line is you're going to live forever. You're going to reign with Jesus in heaven. It's going to be awesome. And nobody up that, you know what, the people in charge down here are not going to be in charge up there. And you're going to be a lot longer there than you're going to be here. So does it really matter? No, it doesn't matter. So just walk with the Lord, endure. And you know what, I believe that God will give you grace when it comes to that time to suffer God will give you grace when it's time for you to suffer for the name of Jesus. All right. That's the promise and uh, standing on the promises. That's a good song that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt. We're talking about storms. When the howling door, uh, storms of doubt and fear assail by the living Word of God, I shall prevail. I'm standing on the promises of God. Okay. Rely on the God's promises. Number four, whatever. Refuse to be discouraged. Boy, I tell you what, if you, if you read Acts 27 and you don't get encouraged, you've missed the whole point. Because every time you turn around, he's saying, take courage, be encouraged. I've been encouraged, now I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to put courage back in you. There's a song I really like. I'm a little bit on the countryside, and it's called Poor Wayfaring Stranger. How many of you ever heard of that song? Anybody? You may not know the words, but I love that it talks about storms. It says this, I know dark clouds will gather over me. I know my pathway will be rough and steep, but golden fields lie out before me where these weary eyes no more shall weep. I'm going there to see my mother. She said she'd meet me when I come. I'm just a-going over Jordan. I'm just a-going over home. Man, when you get a little discouraged, just reject it and say, I'm not going to be discouraged. What are you talking about? My daddy and mother are already over there. I'm on my way. I'm crossing Jordan. I'm going into the promised land. I'm going to live forever with Jesus. It doesn't matter what happens to me on this earth. It doesn't matter what storm. No storm is greater than my Savior. I get to be with Jesus forever. I get to be with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and I'm going to be where righteousness rules. I'm going to be in a nation, in a, in a place there. I'm going to be with God where all of the laws are right 
and they're good and no more sin is going to be. I'm going to be in a place where there's no sexual immorality. I'm going to be in a place where there's nobody calling the name of the Lord in vain. I'm going to be in a place where there's no arguing on television. I, to, nowadays, the first requirement for you to be on television is, are you mad at somebody? If you're not mad about anybody, you can't be on TV. I mean, they're just fussing and fighting all the time. I am so sick of that, I don't even like to watch it anymore. And I want to say this to you. I believe God wants Bellevue to be an oasis of peace and love, and I believe people are so sick of turmoil out there, they will flock to this place if they can find the peace of God among us. Amen? Amen. You walk around as emissaries of peace, walking in the peace, even in storms, and God will use you to attract people to Jesus and attract people to this church. Refuse to be discouraged. And then reassure others who are afraid. This is a great time to witness in our nation because a lot of people are walking in fear, but we're not going to do it. The Bible says that we're going to be comforted and that we need to turn around and comfort the people with the comfort that we've received from the Lord that comes straight out of 2 Corinthians 1, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Paul was praying in the middle of a pile of grain down below, apparently. He was by himself, and he was pouring out his heart to God, and an angel showed up and said, I hear your prayer you will appear before Caesar. I'm going to save everybody on this ship. He got encouraged. He got comforted, did he not? The word comfort, the word fort in there, it means to be strengthened in your inner man, to be strengthened with, come with, fort, to be strengthened, to be strengthened with the power of God. And he came up out of the belly of that ship and said, hey guys, I just got comforted. Now I'm going to comfort you. And he he just got encouraged, and he encouraged them. That's what we have to do with other people. Reassure others who are afraid that they don't have to be afraid. They can take all their concerns to God, and God will help them through their storms. A couple more things. Regard God's instructions. Do whatever you do by the Word of God. I love the promise that God gave to Joshua. Moses had died in Joshua chapter 1, and God says, Moses is dead, therefore arise. God was not dependent on Moses. Moses was dependent on God. And the people of God had a new leader, and he said, look, bottom line is, doesn't matter if it's Moses or Joshua, basically God was saying, I'm the real leader, so let's get moving. And Joshua, I want to give you a promise. Here's your promise. Joshua 1 8. This book, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. That, and that's a way of God saying that you'll say it over. It won't depart from your mouth. He's not saying don't speak it. What he's saying is it'll be in your mouth all the time. That's a Hebrew way of saying it, it won't depart out of your mouth. It, it, you'll never have your mouth where the Word of God's not coming out of it. It's going to be coming out of there all the time. It's a beautiful way of saying it. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. In other words, the book of the law will always be coming out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night that you may be careful to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous. Then you will have success. If you'll do it according to my word, if you'll regard my instructions, you'll walk in peace even in the midst of your storms. One more thing, and this is something we've got to just come to, rest in God's providence. What does that mean? God is a sovereign God. If you are living and walking in the will of God, look at me, nothing can come to you into your life that God doesn't let it slip through His hands. Amen? And God is a good God. Jesus said, I'm holding you. And John, He said, I'm holding you in my hand. No one. My, my sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give eternal life to them. They shall never perish, and no one shall snatch them out of my hand. The Father who is greater than all 
greater than all. No one can snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And what he's saying is, we've got you with a double, double holding there. I'm holding you. The Father is holding you. We've got you. We've got you. Everything's going to be okay. You are in our grasp, and that is the providence of God. If, if you're in God, nothing can come into your life without passing past those omniscient hands and those omnipotent hands. And if God lets something in your life happen, it's a storm that He's going to use to make you more like Jesus. God is a good God, and God can take all things to work together for good. I love Psalm 31, verse 15. I'll read it to you in two versions, and then we'll be through. Psalm 31, 15. My, the psalmist says, David says, my times are in your hands. Right? Isn't that what I just said? My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Now, let me read it to you from the New Living. I love this. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Oh, if you'll do these things, God will help you through the storms of life. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you that you're a real God, a living God. And Lord, thank you so much that you take us through every storm and we come out looking like Jesus. Thank you that you took Jesus through the storm of the cross and you gave him the resurrection. Thank you that you took Paul through the Mediterranean Sea. He came out, healed everybody that was sick on the island of Malta. We'll read, read about that next week, Lord. Thank you for that. And then, Lord, he went on to Rome and gave a good witness even before Nero, who was so ungodly. Thank you for even when they cut his head off, dear God. Thank you. That, Lord, it was just a little split second of pain, and then it was followed by, Lord, now for 2,000 years he's been in your presence, and I know that he doesn't regret a moment of living for you on this earth. We bless you and praise you, and we thank you that we are never alone. You're always with us, even in the midst of our storm. You're even with us, I believe, more, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.